Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Singh. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, and Fully Funded Life. We are committed to you living a fully funded life. We love coming to you in your ears every single week, maybe to your eyes on YouTube, uh, to help you with right now relevant financial information to help you in your money journey so you, yes, you can live a fully funded life. You heard a slight giggle there. That was for my co-host, Megan Hibbard. Are you fired up today? Yes. It's the second Monday of the year. It is. Are you, have you achieved all of your goals for the year? <laughs> yes. No. Yes, that's no. awesome. <laughs> Not yet. It is January the 10th. 10th, yeah. And it's episode number? 184. Yeah. January's flying by. In 16 episodes, if my math is right, we will hit number 200. I feel like we just celebrated 100. I'm th- I'm, I feel like it, when we hit 200, we need to throw a party. We should. Like we should give $200 to somebody who listens to the podcast. Sure. And so if you're watching on YouTube and you think we should give $200 to somebody who listens to the podcast, you should, <laughs> or, you should or comment you. <laughs> as such yeah. uh, there at the uh, on the YouTube video. That'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, Or if you think we should give some other number. That'd be awesome too. Um, I, for some reason, I think if somebody comments on another number, it's not going to be lower. Uh, <laughs> so tell everybody what we're going to talk about this week. Yes. So we're talking about setting and sticking to a budget. So our question is, I recently heard you say that you have prepared and followed a monthly budget for nearly 20 years. How on earth did you and Jen do that? Please share some tips with the rest of us. Okay. Well, that's going to be awesome. And it is true. We have followed a budget for nearly 20 years. It's amazing. Uh, it's going to be in... Well, it's going to be in June of 2023. So about 18 months from now that we will have achieved that. That's pretty amazing. Years. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to go to my favorite section of the podcast. You know what time that is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip Podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. Well, welcome to the current money event section. Current money event section. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I am fired up about this. Uh, You know, the current money events topic is this. It's a major announcement. There are 355 days left this year. Who's counting? Now you may say, what? Only 10 days have come and nine have gone. We're working on the 10th. And you're already telling me how many days are left in the year? (laughs) No time like the press. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. And here's why. Habits, they make or break you. It's Mm -hmm. true for your fitness. It's true for your relationships. It's true for your time. And yes, my friend, it is true for your money. Have you followed excellent money habits in these first 10 days? Have you? Mm -hmm. Megan, have you? Have you prepared a budget before this month began? Before you got paid? Before the bill showed up? Did you? Or did Mm -hmm. you not? (laughs) Did you follow that budget for these first 10 days? Did you contribute to retirement account or have it set up to do so this month? Have you signed up for a financial education class or event? Or signed up for fully funded life? Which is even better. (laughs) Fully funded dot life. And, And maybe... Have you reached out to your financial mentor or coach and set up a meeting so you can receive some excellent mentoring and counsel from them? Have you contributed money to your savings account? In just the last 10 days. I'm not saying have you ever done that. I'm saying this year, 10 days. Uh, Do in 10 days. Do it at least just 10 days. You've had 10 days. Have you avoided new debt? 
Some, some people, Megan, listen to this podcast, have not avoided new debt and only 10 days of the year over. I know. It's wild. That makes me cry. <laughs> <gasps> oh, wait. It's not my debt, so I don't have to cry. But I cry knowing what people may have signed up for. Uh, have you paid some debt off? So, you know, sometimes I think maybe I'm pointing out the negative stuff yeah. too often. Like I'm point, they've got a wound and I'm like poking at it, Pushing and sticking it, yeah. salt in it. Um, I don't want it to come across that way. I want it to come across as the fact that we here at the Monday Money Tip Podcast are committed to your financial success and we are your coach. And right now we're saying it's time for you to kick it into gear. It's 10 days into the year. If you haven't done it yet, when will you do it this year? I mean, my goodness, 10 days are gone. 10 days. It's a lot. 10 whole days. 10 days is a lot. That's that's five times two. It's two times five. It's one times 10 or 10 times one. Isn't that awesome? Some great math. It's 20 half days. 20 half days. Yeah, something like that. I don't think that one works. <laughs> it's like 80 quarter days. No. <laughs> no. No, it's like... You should just stop at the, quarter first, days. the first math. <laughs> Something like we that. Lost I lost them I all. Do Bring them back. Uh, oh, wait. Yes, I do. So what have you done in the last 10 days? Because in this current money event section, what you've done in the last 10 days, well, that kind of starts to be a line. Mm -hmm. And it's an excellent indicator for how you're going to live the next 355 days. And what do your last 10 days reveal to you about your money habits? And do you like what you see? What do you need to do about it? Ooh, challenging times and rowdy times here at the Money Money Tip Podcast. And that's it for today's current money event section. Ding, ding. I thought you weren't allowed to do that voice anymore because it hurts your throat. It does hurt my throat. As a professional speaker, I probably shouldn't do that. All right. Our success story. Are you ready? I am ready. This was fun. Okay, so we got this one. You got it, actually. Um, but it says, good morning, Joe. This is Clint. And he said, I wanted to send you this photo, and you'll be able to see the photo on the screen, and tell you thank you very much for your ministry. My family tree has changed because of you and others who spoke into my life about handling money God's way. Have a great day. And he said, he also said, um, we are completely debt free, including their house. So what you'll see on the screen, if you're not watching on YouTube is one of our house payoff spectaculars and they paid off their house. So you can see all the squares on the spectacular are colored in and they are debt free. I met, met Clint and his wife over a decade ago. Wow. And it's been amazing. He's checked in maybe every couple of years. It's been amazing. I trained them as financial coaches. So they already had a natural passion mm -hmm. for this. And I like how he says, and others. Mm -hmm. So there's several things I want to point out here. Number one, I love being a part of people's journeys for the long haul. Yeah. I just love it. There's nothing more rewarding. You know, it, it's awesome. You watch Flip or Flop, and they rehab a house, and it takes them. I know it's a half-hour show, but it takes them 60 to 90 days. Well, I know for somebody with their financial journey to pay off their house, it's 10 years mm -hmm. for a lot of people. It's not 30, but it's 10. That doesn't marinate well into a TV show. Yeah. Right? 10 years. If you don't have 10 years to wait to produce a show, but I get to see it because we've persevered and we've stuck with this long enough that we're getting these the the yeah. huge steps and accomplishments and financial journeys. The other thing that I love here is he says, I want to thank you and others, mm. which means he has more than just us speaking into his life for his finances. I suspect one of them is Dave Ramsey because he says something Dave Ramsey says all the time about changing your family tree. So that, I think that's an indication that Dave Ramsey may be one of the others. But it's important that we all learn from many other people. Mm -hmm. There are people who will never get airtime on this podcast from you or from me, but we know them very well in our personal lives, mm -hmm. who have spoke into our lives about money stuff, but also about other stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you've gotten counsel about being a mom, about being a mom of twins, about, <laughs> you know, being a wife, mm -hmm. about managing a household, about buying a house, about yeah. selling a house, right? And these people have played a very important role in your own life. Yeah. And, and so they are the others. And we all have others. And, you know, I'm just grateful that Clint took time to send me a text message with a picture. Mm. And I think that's also a great thing, you know, of keeping the same phone number for a long time. 
you know, they can get in touch with you. Sure. And so great job to Clint and his wife and uh, their family. They get to experience the abundant life now, the fully funded life because they have no debt, including their house. Yeah, and they are, they are young. They are, they are not, they are not retired, <laughs> but I bet you they could now yeah. get fired up. It's good. Hey, podcast listener, it's day 10. When are we going to get your success story like that? We can't wait. That's why you're listening to this podcast. Keep listening. We're going to help you get there faster than you ever thought possible. All right. Our question for today is, I recently heard you say that you have prepared and followed a monthly budget for nearly 20 years. How on earth did you and Jen do that? Please share some tips with the rest of us. Okay. Well, I have done a budget every month for nearly 20 years. I have a copy of every one of those budgets. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. I have a copy of yep. every one. I was... Uh, some of some of our podcast listeners will recognize the name of Whitney, mm -hmm. who was a guest on one of these podcasts. She mm -hmm. actually interviewed somebody for one of these podcasts as well. She was the one interviewed with uh, Sarah mm -hmm. on our spending challenge. Yep. And uh, I, she, she was actually in the office in the international headquarters <laughs> as we were having our end of the year bash uh, recently, and uh, I pulled off the shelf the actual folder. Mm -hmm the three ring binder of that I keep in my office of the three years leading up to my, I have had enough moment where I thought I was doing a good thing by tracking my bank account transactions. And really what I was doing was documenting our chaos. Yeah. And, and I think it's every time I open it up, I look at two or three pages. I took two or three random pages and it just literally was like, how, how did we even do that? <laughs> and I, I always answer not very well. Mm -hmm. And I definitely don't want to go back there. And so that helped motivate us to put together a budget and follow it. And now I have a copy of every single budget. And I wanted to share some tips with everybody. And so maybe, Megan, you could share the tip and then we can have a conversation yep. about them. All right. So number one, both of us agreed to live by a budget. Yes. So if I could give one tip, particularly for married couples, people that are managing money together, is to have agreement that yes, we're going to let a budget kind of help us make all of our decisions with money. Um, that, that we're not going to get mad at each other when something can't get funded because what are you doing? You're just arguing about math. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not your fault, their fault that math is not in your favor. <laughs> you know, I agree, you know, math, math is frustrating for many people. Mm -hmm. I tend to love it for some reason. Uh, but I also recognize I'm in the minority there. It's true. But here's what I would just say is, you know, have if you're married, have you both agreed to live by a budget? Because I found no better tool to maximize money. I just, I, you know, Matt uh, is in our office and he is our finance, chief financial officer and he runs cash flow plans for all of our businesses. And I think we're all grateful for Matt not too many people want his job. I haven't seen anybody clamoring to take his job. <laughs> He's in a deluge of spreadsheets and math all the time. But if we find a better way to manage money, mm. well, we'll choose that. Yeah. So if you don't like the word budget, use another word, a spending plan, a <laughs> in investment plan, a fun plan, a life plan, whatever you want to call it, but it's a budget. Make sure you do that. It's so, if you don't both agree to do this, that's going to be a challenge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's another tip that we All can right. share with them? Number two, we know how much money is coming in. Yes. So I, I will tell you for Jenny and I living by a budget for nearly 20 years. How long have you and Jordan kind of ran with your budget ever since you got married? Yeah. 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 I mean, we both were kind of running that lane before, so it was nice because it was a natural flow. I mean, obviously there's lots of things you have to figure out when you're getting married and merging two finances and budgets and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. So how long you've been married now? We just celebrated six years in October. So that's like 76 months or so. That's oh, a lot. Sounds like a lot. When you say a lot that. of budgets. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, enough time to, to really figure out how that stuff works. Mm. Do you know how much money Jordan makes? Yes. Okay. I'm not asking you to reveal it. I know it <laughs> seems weird, but you do know. Okay. Uh, does he know how much money you make? Yes. Does he know about any side income or bonuses that show up? Yes. 
Do you ever have an inclination, I'm going to hide this from him? No. No. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, that elicited a, a really profound eye roll. Like, what in the world? No way. That would never happen. Yeah. Same thing here. Yeah. I always joke, you know, if I get some found money, yeah. oh, I'm not going to tell Stash Jenny. I'm here. not going to tell her. And of course I'm going to tell her. Yeah. And the reason this is really important, and it's why we've been able to stick to budgeting this long, is when you both know all of the income, it eliminates the opportunity for something called financial deception and or even the appearance of it. And when there is financial deception, there's another terminology that's come up for it called financial infidelity. Mm-hmm. And people who have had people hide money stuff from them, when meeting with counselors, Counselors have said that the feelings they experience of betrayal mirror that of marital infidelity. They literally feel cheated. And it's because we're dealing with something more profound than money here. We're dealing with the funding of plans, hopes, and dreams. And if you don't share your income with each other, whether you are being deceptive or not, it, the door is open for the feeling of that. And so Jenny and I just know, this is how much money's coming in and let's plan it. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that if you're listening to the podcast, hey, if you're not open with that in your relationship, if you're in a relationship, why? Mm-hmm. What, what's causing that? Yeah. Because it is very hard to stick to a budget if you don't know how much money's coming in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So very important. Yeah. Get, let's give them another tip. All right. Number three. We know where the money is going to go. Right. So not only do we know how much money is coming in, the income, we know where the money is going to go, which is the outgo. And, and so we sit down every month. This is not a stand-up meeting. It is a sit down. <laughs> and uh, it's not a long meeting. And it's probably 15 minutes or less. And we agree where we're going to utilize these resources. That is called budgeting. <laughs> There's also another word for it called communicating. And so I would urge everybody to have an action item, which is to set a date certain where you're going to prepare your budget each and every month. Put it on your calendar and keep it as firmly as you keep your kid's gymnastics appointment. (laughs) Keep it as firmly as you keep your kid's basketball practice and the basketball games and the baseball games. And what are all the games happening? It's mostly basketball, gymnastics, indoor track. I don't know what they are. Parents, it's crazy. Parents who will never miss that stuff will miss six, seven, eight years worth of budgeting, Mm -hmm. even though they say it's important. Well, your actions indicate that it's not as important as you say it is. Um, So I encourage you, make sure you agree where the money is, is going to go and that you know what all that money is. Okay. And agree that you live by a budget. That's our first three tips. What's the fourth one? Yes. Number four. Progress begats confidence. Right. So progress, I wanted to use a King James Version word. I can't tell you the last time I used that word. You didn't use begat lately? Uh, Can't say I have. Yeah. Read the book of numbers. Get fired up. Mm -hmm. Um, But progress begat confidence. And you can say it as you said it. Progress begats confidence. I felt like it needed an S. Yeah. Yeah. It it doesn't need it the way I'm saying it here. I'm going to say it again. (laughs) Progress begat confidence. Confidence. Begatting means begatting. birthing. Begatting. Some of them begatting. <laughs> You're going to be begatting some twins soon. <laughs> I hope but so. progress begat confidence. In other words, it yielded, it birthed confidence. Mm. You know, as we follow the budget, huh, surprise, surprise, we experience financial progress. Mm. Is that shocking? Mm-hmm. No. Stabilize yourself. You look <laughs> like you're going to fall down, you know, with your overwhelming. Okay. Now watch this. Existing debt began to dwindle away. It did. Just started to dwindle away. We stopped signing up for more debt. <laughs> um, the investments in our daughter's college account actually started happening and then became consistent. And as we saw that financial progress, we experienced a feeling that my best description of it is called financial confidence. And we knew where our money was going and we knew it was positioning us to prosper in the future. And And I just want everybody to experience that feeling of financial confidence and financial confidence is birthed. It is begatted. It's begat. (laughs) Begats. From making progress, from doing something that allows you to make progress and having that confidence that, Hey, we're doing the right stuff. Mm -hmm. And it gets, it's really important as you're starting out. If you've been struggling, 
and it's still important 20 years in. I, if I was stuck and not making progress 20 years in, I would be apt to fall back to old habits. But because it continues to begat more progress, it begats more confidence, I like it. And I got to say begat like five times, which was my goal for today. I didn't feel like it was like a game. Yeah. How many times can you fit that in? Somebody count how many times we said the word begat and comment on it begat. on the YouTube video. Just They can begat. Uh, I don't know. Did you say bacon? Bacon. Begat. begat, begat. <laughs> All right, number five, we took extreme measures. Yes. This is one of the tips that helped us live by monthly budget. Now, this was at the outset, but we cut up our credit cards in the good old Dave Ramsey way. We chopped them up. Not only that, I called up the companies and shut down the accounts. <laughs> Somehow they, were, I remember they weren't very call. happy about it. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Sengel, you've been a very good customer. <laughs> I bet I have. Um, you know, if you shut off this account, it will hurt your credit score. <gasps> Creepy, spooky. Mm -hmm. It begat spooky feelings. <laughs> um, so here's what I would just say. I said to them, well, having the credit card affects my bank account. Mm -hmm. And if I have the choice between having my bank account affected negatively or my credit score affected negatively, I'll choose I'll choose my, my credit score being affected negatively because mm -hmm. I want my bank account to grow. And we drove our cars until they had more than 300,000 miles on them. Amazing. They're in museums. We rare. I'm just kidding. <laughs> museum cars? They were not museum quality. I can tell you that. I drove them until the doors were falling off. <laughs> They're not worthy of museums. I went to museums with cars. Those are much cooler than any car I've ever driven. Um, we rarely went out to restaurants. Rarely. And we use cash for all impulsive spending categories. That's extreme. Mm -hmm. But it helped us stick to this stuff. Now, subsequently, six years later, I went back and got a credit card. I've never paid a dime of, of excuse me, of interest mm -hmm. since. Pretty amazing. Yep. And I use cash still to this day for impulsive spending categories. And now I would say it is not the word rarely on how often we go to restaurants. <laughs> we go there more often than I'd like to say. <laughs> awesome. And then we have one more tip yes. that I wanted to share with everybody. Yep. So the last one is I H H E moment, which stands for, I have had enough. I have had enough. Just like your parents would announce I've had enough when they've had enough. Mm. Uh, although I'm sure that never happened for you and your sister. I'm sure you were so <laughs> good and perfect <laughs> and got along wonderfully and never <laughs> fought over anything. If only, <laughs> but at some point in time, most people's mamas had enough. And when they had enough, things change. Mm. And ultimately Jenny and I just got sick and tired enough of just earning money to see it all just go away without seeing any financial progress that we just said, I've had enough. And those feelings forced us to really survey our habits and our behaviors and helped us commit to making the necessary changes. And so I would just say, as we wrap up this podcast episode, you know, we all know how to do a budget. I mean, come on, put your income at the top. Plan out where it's going to go. Do that before you get paid. That's called a plan. Equals but, exactly zero. Yeah. Trademark. But the tips that I'm sharing today are more like long-term things that I look back on and say, this is what helped us stick to this process for 20 plus, nearly 20 years. And, and agreeing to live by a budget was where we started. Having an I have had enough moment is where we started. Taking extreme measures is where we started. What's helped us sustain it is we've known where all the money was going and where it was all coming from. And every time we made progress, it begat more confidence. More progress begat more confidence. And a lot of begatting later, here we are. And we've got some money in the bank. we got some investments that are growing. It's more begatting to happen. And we've been able to fund a lot of dreams. Mm. We want that for everybody's listening to the podcast. What else would you say as you wrap it up? Um, I mean, I think we've, I don't know. I think this is a, it's definitely a different episode than some of the ones we've normally done. I mean, some of the ones we have done have been 
literally here is how you do it. And I think those are super helpful, but I think these are the things like you're saying that are going to help people sustain. So if you're not on the same page as spouses, like maybe that's where you need to start about having the conversation about sitting down without your kids around when when you're not, yeah, when you're not tired, when you're not like hungry, when you're you're not hangry, you know, like when there's these, you can find this chunk of time, maybe you leave your house and go somewhere else. Like maybe you have a sitter, um, you know, things like that where like, maybe that's where you need to start. Or maybe, you know, like there's somewhere else that you see a spot in your marriage or your life where you're like, we need to focus on this for our finances, but we just want to be able to help and come alongside and be able to help, um, provide tips or just different things that we've seen that have worked for us. And these specifically are things that have worked for you and Jen and you guys' lives. Um, but I, I think it's super helpful to see the real vulnerable side of it, of, it wasn't always great. Yeah. Like it was hard, but you made these steps and now here you are nearly 20 years later able to say like, here's where we started and now here's where we're at. You know, we have all these businesses and we have investment properties and we have like all these things like farmland, like things you didn't really think that you could have had back when you were just starting, but now looking to see, oh, over these 20 years, these are the things we've been able to accomplish because we did these things. It is remarkable. Yeah. And the same thing is happening for you and Jordan Mm -hmm. and you're seeing progress and that's begatting confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful thing as well. (laughs) Uh, so, Hey, we encourage everybody with that. Uh, the, the quote for today is what gets measured gets addressed. And I attribute that to engineers everywhere. (laughs) And that's why they love to measure things because that allows them to address them. And a budget is an excellent way to measure your money on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So, Put it up to the yardstick. Make sure it works. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about next week. Yes. So next week we're talking about some foundational elements of the ladder. So we're going to start with coaches. So um, you've heard us talk about the, I was breaking down that ladder, the nine rungs to a fully funded life. So with that, before you can even start on the ladder, you have to have these foundational elements that are in place so that the ladder is strong and sturdy and can stand because if you've ever tried to stand on a ladder that is not on solid ground, it's not very pleasant. So we want to make sure that you are prepared. And one of the first things we're going to start with is coaches. Yeah, we're going to do a series one. throughout the year yeah. on foundational elements of the ladder. And coaches, well, they help that ladder be less wobbly. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Hey, if you like today's episode, help us get this podcast to other people who benefit. You can do it by rating our podcast and leaving a review. We're really excited for the number of people who have actually taken the time to rate this podcast and review it. Uh, Also, if you'd share on your social media platform, we'd be so grateful. If you're on YouTube, click subscribe, click that bell, share it with somebody. Hey, maybe you need to share it with your spouse. And if you have success, which we know you will, uh, make sure you share that with us. You can send it to us on any of those social media platforms or email it to us at info at IWBNIN.com. That's I-N-F-O at IWBNIN.com. Take us out of here, Megan. Yep. We hope you guys have a great week. We can't wait to see how you set and stick to your budget. Maybe there's something that you've done that you feel like has really been helpful that you want to make sure you share with the other podcast listeners. So definitely let us know and we'll see you guys next week. Happy Monday, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.